Now, they say change is the only constant. The only way to remain relevant is to constantly change with the times. And this is not a prologue to a lecture on philosophy. What I'm talking about, or what I'm going to talk about next, is law. It's about how laws must change with the times to remain relevant and effective. And I've said this before in the context of gun laws in the US, how human rights in America are being compromised because the country has refused to change an age-old law. Tonight, I bring you a positive story, and this one's from India. India is trying to change an age-old law to protect human rights and the freedom of nearly 1.4 billion people. The government of India is rethinking the sedition law. The Narendra Modi-led government has told India's apex court that it will be re-examining the sedition law in India. First things first, what is the sedition law? This law states that a person commits the act of sedition if he or she brings or attempts to bring hatred, contempt or disaffection towards the government. Now this law is vaguely worded and it's widely abused. And we'll get to that in a bit. First, let's look at the origins of this law. Sedition dates back to the British Raj in India. The law was drafted by British historian and politician Thomas Babington Macaulay. The name may ring a bell. Macaulay is the same man who pushed to make English the medium of instruction in the Indian education system. He was an imperialist, if there ever was one. And he defied, defined sedition in these words. Whoever by words, either spoken or written, or by signs, or by visible representation, or otherwise, brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law in India. Like we said, the words are vague because the idea was to abuse it as much as possible to suppress dissent. Why? To tame anti-imperialism in India. The sedition law came into effect in 1870. In the years that followed, the British used sedition to crack down on India's freedom movement and India's freedom fighters. Mahatma Gandhi was accused of sedition. So was Lokmanya Tilak. In fact, anyone who raised a voice against the British imperialists was tried for sedition in India. But somehow, even after 75 years of independence, sedition remains an ugly truth of modern India. If accused of sedition, you don't get bail. You could go to jail for life. Even if you manage to get out in some years, you'll be barred from applying for a government job or for that matter, traveling abroad. In 2020, 73 cases of sedition were filed in India, 93 in 2019, at least 70 in 2018. And all of these cases, of all of these cases, there were just two convictions, which only goes on to show the disutility of this law. And I'm not saying that sedition cannot be used to combat secessionism or terrorism. It can. But the fact is that in most cases, police fail to file a charge sheet because most sedition cases are baseless. You see, in a country of nearly 1.4 billion Indians, where there are 1.4 billion versions of the truth, any of these truths can seem seditious to someone. So what happens next? In 2018, the Law Commission of India highlighted this problem in its report. Singing from the same songbook is not a benchmark of patriotism. One must indulge in constructive criticism or debates. Expressions used in such thoughts might be harsh and unpleasant to some, but that does not ren render the actions to be branded sedition. There is no doubt that sedition is antithetical to freedom of speech and expression. In fact, India has been fighting this law for quite some time. In 2011, a private member's bill against sedition was introduced in the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of parliament. In 2015, a private member's bill was introduced in the Lok Sabha, the lower house of parliament. In 2021, the apex court of India stepped in. The chief justice questioned whether sedition was necessary even after 75 years of independence. Well, today the government has, has an answer. The affidavit filed with the Supreme Court reads, and I quote, the Honorable Prime Minister believes that at a time when our nation is marking Azadi Ka Mahotsav, we need to, as a nation, work even harder to shed colonial baggage that has passed its utility, which includes outdated colonial laws and practices. And then it goes on to say, the Government of India, being fully cognizant of various views being expressed on the subject of sedition, and also having considered the concerns of 
civil liberties and human rights while committed to maintain and protect the sovereignty and integrity of this great nation has decided to re-examine and reconsider the provisions of section 124A of the Indian Penal Code. Well, that's the section that deals with sedition. It may be a matter of time before this section is removed or rewritten to protect Indians from legal abuse, to protect journalists who are often slapped with sedition for their reportage. So it's a good day for India because at the end of the day, a re-examination of the sedition law will only uphold democracy and protect the cacophony of conflicting opinions the world's biggest democracy comes with. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.